Hello, this video will demonstrate the mathematics behind the cobweb labor market model. We'll start with a labor supply and labor demand curve. Labor supply is given by W equals 10 plus 5E. E is just the number of workers employed. Labor demand equals W equals 80 minus 2E. E once again representing the number of workers employed and W as usual is the wage. So the first thing we're going to do is let's find our initial equilibrium. So we're going to find our initial equilibrium so our initial equilibrium here we're just going to set W equal to W so 10 plus 5e equals 80 minus 2e. Collect the e terms uh, minus 10 from both sides. So in our initial equilibrium, we're going to have 10 people employed. To get the wage, we'll plug this 10 into either the labor supply or labor demand curve. If we did our math right, we'll get the same wage back. So plugging 10 into the labor supply equation, we get a wage equal to 60. So this is our initial equilibrium condition. Maybe we can call this period zero. So in period zero equals 10, W equals 60. So the next period rolls around. Let's call it period one. And in period one, the demand for labor, maybe these are computer scientists, the demand for computer scientists increases to, let's say, so let me just put demand here. Say the new demand for computer scientists equals W equals 100 minus 2E. So in period one, we want to find what will the wage be and what will the level of employment be. So the labor supply is going to be based off of what happened in the previous period. In the previous period, the wage was 60 and 10 people were willing to work. So the labor supply, again, will be based off of last period's wage, which was 60. So labor supply in period one is going to be 10 workers. So to get the wage, all we're going to do is plug 10 into our new labor demand equation. And we get a wage in period one equal to 100 minus 20 or $80. So in period one, the wage equals 80 and the employment level equals 10. Well, what about period two? In period two, we still have this new demand, so that hasn't changed. So the demand equation, I'll just rewrite it, is 100 minus 2E. Labor supply, however, in period two, is going to be based off the wage in period one. So the wage in period one was $80. Okay, People saw that. And they made their plans then about how much labor they're going to supply in the coming period. So people saw in wage in period one the wage of eighty dollars. People say, oh, at that wage of eighty dollars, maybe I'll go to get go to school uh, and then enter this profession after I finish my schooling. So labor supply then in period two was is going to be as follows. I'm going to take the labor supply equation, which I'll just rewrite from above. And we're going to plug $80 into that. So based on people are making their labor supply decisions off of a wage of $80, 
we're going to get 70 equals 5e. This means that, well, let me go over here, e will equal 70 divided by 5 or 14. So in period two, we're going to have 14 people working. What will those people earn? Plug this 14 into the labor demand equation, and in period two, the wage will equal 100 minus 2 times the number of people working in period two. We're going to get a wage of $72. And then we can keep repeating this. We can go to period three. In period three, labor supply will be based off of the wage in period two, which is $72. So workers will be basing their labor supply decisions on believing that they're going to earn a wage of $72 going forward. So let me get a clean sheet up here. So in period three, I'll just rewrite the labor demand. Okay, so labor supply is going to be based off of last period's wage, which we said was $72. Okay. So labor supply in period two will be based off of the wage in the previous period. So let's get that labor supply equation, just rewriting the original equation. And now we're going to evaluate this at last period's wage of $72. And then just solve for E. E will equal 12.4. So with 12.4 people working, the wage that will be paid to these workers will be given by this equation. So I'm just taking this 12.4 and plugging it into our labor demand equation. The increased labor demand equation, let's say for computer scientists, so then we get a wage here equal to $75.20. And we can keep repeating this. We could go to period four. So in period four, labor supply will be based off of the previous period's wage of $75.20. So we can evaluate the labor supply equation at $75.20. Find how many people are going to be working, take that number, plug it into the demand equation to get the wage, and just keep uh, repeating the same exercise. Okay, uh, I, I won't finish up period four. I'll let you do that. Um, so I'll stop here then for today.